In this experiment, you will determine the heat of formation, or reaction enthalpy, of magnesium oxide using a calorimetry method. Over the course of a reaction, energy may either be released or absorbed by a system. If a reaction at constant pressure releases heat, it is called an exothermic process. This means that the sum of the enthalpies of the products are less than that of the reactants, and the change in enthalpy for the reaction, or delta H, is negative. If a system absorbs heat from its surroundings as a reaction occurs, the sum of the enthalpies of the products is greater than the sum of enthalpies of the reactants, and the change in enthalpy is positive. This is known as an endothermic process. The magnitude of an enthalpy change depends on various factors. The calculation of enthalpy of formation for a reaction, as shown on the previous slide, is defined as producing one mole of product. Therefore, units of enthalpy change are kilojoules per mole. The enthalpy change for a reverse process is the same magnitude as the enthalpy for the forward process, however it is of opposite sign. This is shown on the slide by the reaction of hydrogen and iodine gas to produce hydrogen iodide. However, as shown below, different phases of the products or reactants can lead to different enthalpy values. The enthalpy of formation of liquid water is not the same as that of water vapor, so the enthalpy change for the reactions to produce water in different phases are not the same if you think about the reaction enthalpy as the sum of product minus reactant enthalpies. This is why enthalpy changes are usually defined as being at a given set of conditions, called standard state. Standard state is defined as being at a temperature of 298.15 Kelvin and a pressure of 1 bar or 1 atmosphere. The reaction we are looking at in this experiment is the combination of solid magnesium with oxygen gas to form solid magnesium oxide. We are lacking the equipment to directly measure the enthalpy change for this process, so an indirect method will be used. Enthalpy is a state function, so it is independent of the steps used to get from reactants to products as long as they begin and end at standard state conditions. This allows us to use a series of reactions to find the overall enthalpy change of formation of magnesium oxide. Combining the three reactions shown on the slide will give us the overall reaction we want to look at. This is shown on the next slide. By reversing the reaction that is performed in Part B and adding in the formation of water from hydrogen and oxygen gas that is in the lab manual gives us the overall reaction we are looking for. According to Hess's law, the separate reaction enthalpy changes can be summed to get the enthalpy of the overall reaction. Note that because the Part B reaction is being reversed, the sign of the enthalpy change is also reversed. To sum up what we have learned so far, we know that the standard heat of formation for a reaction is when one mole of products is formed from elements in their standard state. We know that standard state is defined as being at a temperature of 298.15 Kelvin and a pressure of 1 bar, which is approximately the same as 1 atmosphere. Finally, we know that if enthalpy changes for different reactions are being compared, their temperature, pressure, and physical state need to be specified. For this experiment, variations from standard state during the lab due to small differences in temperature and pressure will be assumed to be negligible and will be ignored when the experiment is performed. A simple calorimeter will be used to contain the reactions happening in this experiment. Calorimeters are generally insulated containers that trap heat that would otherwise be released into the surroundings. This one will consist of a styrofoam cup containing a magnetic stir bar and a thermometer. It will allow you to measure the temperature as the reactions proceed, which you will use to determine the enthalpy change. The heat evolved in the reaction will cause the temperature of the system to rise. The heat given off will be absorbed by the solution containing the reaction and the calorimeter. This quantity of heat absorbed will be equal in magnitude to the heat released, but opposite in sign. A second factor, known as heat capacity, is also important when calculating the enthalpy change for this reaction. The heat capacity of a body is defined as the amount of heat needed to raise its temperature by one degree. Knowing the temperature change over the course of the reactions in part A and B, the heat capacity of your solution and calorimeter will allow you to calculate the change in enthalpy. The solution has a specific heat capacity of 3.49 joules per gram Kelvin, which must be multiplied by the mass of your solution. This will be found during the experimental procedure. The heat capacity of the calorimeter is simply 21 joules per kelvin and includes the thermometer and magnetic stir bar.
because you know the heat capacity of the solution and the calorimeter, which were given in the previous slide and in the lab manual, and the temperature change during the reaction, finding the product gives you the magnitude of heat evolved in the reaction with the opposing sign. Changing the sign gives us the heat produced by the reaction. Enthalpy change is this heat divided by the number of moles of reactant or product you use when you perform the experiment, which can be found from the mass of the magnesium. The calorimeters used in this experiment will lose a certain amount of heat to their surroundings, so the temperature after the addition of magnesium has to be found by extrapolating the graph of temperature versus time. This is done as shown by drawing a straight line from where the temperature decreases to a vertical line made at the 5 minute mark. Reading straight to the y-axis from this point gives you T2, the final temperature of the system, which you can use to find the change in temperature caused by the reaction.